Hi YouTube. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing better than me. I don't think this is a cold that I have hanging on. I think that it's them spraying in the air. I really haven't felt great. I mean, um, yeah, I smoke cigarettes, but that doesn't account for like, yeah, I have allergies too. But, and I take measures to avoid the symptoms, you know. And I took an allergy pill yesterday and today. But, um, and I don't every day. So if I start choking or have to blow my nose, I don't know how long I'll be on here. It just, just depends, you know. Um, yeah, I haven't felt that great. And I don't think it's... Um, I don't think it's normal, you know. That's my thoughts on it. What isn't normal is them spraying our skies, you know. That's not normal. So, for 007, I just saw my, your, your comment four days ago. Um, it wasn't in my YouTube studio till this morning. And then I, or a while ago here, I saw it. It's like, well, it might have been in the comments in the notifications. I might have saw the 007 um, channel icon and just thought it was something that he was putting up there. If I was busy, I might have missed it like that, but it still should have been in my comments in my studio, which sometimes they don't show up there. I don't know about all of you, but I have had problems like that with them. So, um, my, my topic today, or one of them, I'm listening to a guy that channels called Gnostic Informant, and what I like about people that are um, scholars, biblical scholars, theologians um, that look into history deeper and they actually even know he's been to the part of the world he's talking about, you know. But I'm watching a documentary on how Satan became, became Lucifer. I am. Um, I'm almost done with it, but I shared it in my community and on Facebook. It's it's pretty interesting. But that my topic is, you know how a lot of preachers and biblical teachers will give you the impression that Satan is not loose from its thousands of years. Um, being that Christ came over 2,000 years ago and there was evil on the world then, was there ever a time where there wasn't? I mean, that he was going to be locked up and then loose again and wouldn't be able to deceive the nations anymore. The book of Revelation, um, chapter 20, 20 says uh, that he will be loose. Well, that's already had to have happened, is my point. Obviously, he's still deceiving the nations. So if he was locked up at the time of when the book of Revelation was written, well, and then, too, it was written for in the future. But let me see if I can find that part. I'm going to look for this here just a minute um, so I can read it to you, see if I can. And he threw him into the abyss. This is Revelation 23. And he threw him into the abyss, shut it, and sealed it over him, 
that he could not deceive the nations until the thousand years were complete. So what I'm saying is, if he already threw him into the abyss, um, so he couldn't deceive the nations, to me that sounds like it already happened and he was loose after that again because he's deceiving the nations. I don't know. Because it said it he threw him, not he was going to throw him. He threw him and he shut it. It was sealed over him. So he couldn't deceive the nations until the thousand years were complete. So until the thousand years were complete, he couldn't deceive the nations. So they had to have already gone through that. And we're not waiting for him to be loose. He has been loose, is what I'm trying to say. And he is and has been deceiving the nations for another thousand years. Since that 2,000 year or some change um. 1,975 years or no, you know, see what I mean? So, that's always been my take on that. Because it, I, I know he's on this planet in spirit. Um, if he were locked up and couldn't deceive the nations, there would be no deceit within those nations and his children of disobedience. So, yeah, they're loose. He's loose. That's how I know that is a fact. It's already happened. He was locked up and let loose again for the end times, the end of the book. You know, and then he'll be cast into the lake of fire, um, him and the false prophet. So, after that and will burn forever and that's if you know what burn if you, if you ever had your butt burnt by um somebody that whooped your ass spiritually or with their mouth that's to me what getting burnt in the lake of fire is so anyway <laughs> so cheers everybody I did take some Alka-Seltzer cold tablets, the ones that fizzle in water, and uh, that was about three hours ago, maybe two and a half hours about. Um, I almost took some more, and I thought I better wait. I am feeling better than I was, so. But yeah, it was a rough night, and the air tastes like metallic. I've heard other people ask if I could um, taste that or, you know, if people could. And I have been lately, you know. I was asked that maybe a couple years ago, and I said no. At least I, I didn't detect anything, but lately I have been. And it was, oh, last week I got on here, I was talking about the plane spraying us again. And, you know, I think it's about time that, um, I hate to, hate to, I mean, who would want anybody to fall out of the sky? But then on the other hand, who would want anybody to spray Everybody we love with crap that they're putting, they don't have that right. It's time we make these people fall out of the sky. Really. That's my outlook on it. They don't have the right to do that to us. You know, that's uh, already attempted murder. Whenever you jack Mother Nature around, you're, you're messing with... Um, 
the whole scheme of things that they could never get ahead of and they're they're pretending they can that just it's not cool you know so I was on a Robin's Hood live stream he was talking about Maddie Yahoo or I don't know what he calls Matthew Daly I'm not sure if he's got a YouTube channel anymore but I was friends with him on Facebook up to a point and his name is Timothy Daly Tim that's his name so just thought I'd let people know from what I understand this dude I'm talking about um, was accused of uh, trying to hook up with a teenage boy you know yeah I thought he was a little bit off as far as queer but pedophilia I'm not too sure on that one you know I'm not sure I don't know for sure, so I can't say, you know. I just wanted him to say the truth about the Holy Spirit, about the divine spirit, not the, I, okay. A lot of people aren't going to do it because they think that they're protecting something sacred or that something bad could happen. What more is going to happen than what is already happening in this world? That's what, unless we're personally worried about ourselves and we're actually not protecting anybody, you know. That'd be like if I say I'm protecting a granddaughter and she lives in another place and I never speak her name and of course on here I probably much probably wouldn't a lot um, to keep her safe but what if she was like um, somebody that can make a difference spiritually in people's lives and then by not mentioning that fact the actual truth about stuff um, Really, the truth is the number one thing that I'm trying to dig down to. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I will look into um, other people's knowledge, just not their biblical scholarly abilities. Because, um, yeah, they got that going on. But history, history of our existence in this world and language, those two things that, I mean, there's people that are preachers and they've studied for years and years and they're like, oh no, I don't need to, that's just, that's like hearsay or what good is that going to do me to read that? I have my scriptures and, well, don't you want to know the truth? Don't you want to see where things have been twisted? And why? Don't you want to know the truth, no matter where that leads? That's why, you know, what do you think that the Bible is the only book on the planet where there's truth in there? Just wondering. I'm not saying that um, people should put down their holy book and... Um, just ignore it because of the things that have been twisted in there. But how are you ever going to know unless you expand your horizons, unless you actually look into other literature from, like, like, um, what's his name, Gnostic informant, um, going back into the classic writings of some of the earliest, like Pliny the Elder and Younger and Plato's work or, you know, Odysseus or, you know, you, even Greek mythology or um, the truths that can be found even in myths, the mythos of it all. See, now, 
in all reality, the Bible is a book of myths. They're, they're fables and myths that have been put together with the Word of God interwoven in it. So it's like a book of part lies and part truths, and it's up to you to decipher what's in there. You will have an easier time deciphering what's in there. The more language you learn, and the more history, worldwide history, and where people migrated to and fro, the more you learn about that all in your life is the more information you're going to get to get down to the truth of what's written on our hearts in, in the scriptures. You know, that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to deter anybody from reading the good book. I'm just telling you that there's a lot of other really great books that'll help you achieve what we all want is the truth of our history. You know, that's, don't you? No matter what, you know. One thing I appreciated, too, about this Gnostic informer, he was, uh, he had another one that I shared. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, and he was talking about, let's see if I can recall what the heck he was talking about. Or what I'm talking about for that matter, right? Let's see. Um. Oh, maybe I, or yeah, I'll get there, I'll get there. Just give me a minute. Um, I think it was important. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, it is one of them days I am not on top of my game. I even, haven't even exercised yet. I put dishes in the dishwasher made coffee, fed the kitties, and cleaned up, and that's about, that's about it right now. So, um, let me see if I can recall what he was talking about. Hmm, maybe I can. Was a good point, too. Maybe I'll get there. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at this video I shared. It was Bible scholars are wrong about the New Testament with uh, Richard C. Miller, Ph.D., um, Resurrection and Reception in Early Christianity is a book he wrote. This guy is very intelligent. They both are. It's an excellent com conversation they had on it all. Um, and I'm missing the point I wanted to make with it. I might get there. Um, yeah, I'll just hang with you for a while. Maybe it'll come to me. But Anyway, just really my bottom line is if you have God in your heart, reading and learning other people's thoughts really is not going to kill you. It isn't going to do anything to you. It might give you another idea of the path you're on anyway. You know, that's all. I think it's raining out. It is. I thought I heard that. Wow. It's a sun shower. Doug's out in it. He's had to, um, oh, some people are coming to pick up a truck. 
sometime when our yard isn't muddy and their yard isn't muddy. <laughs> so they live out in South Dakota. They're going to travel here to pick up this truck someday. <coughs> Native American people, they have a, some kind of business, I think. They drill freshwater wells, if I'm not mistaken. So. But. Dang it. I hope I don't do one of these things where I'm going to remember what I wanted to say after I push upload. <laughs> I just hate when that happens. You know. Oh well. I'm going to take a couple aspirins. I really do have a... Yesterday it was my sinuses. Today it was my sinuses and my throat. Just having a kind of a rough day. <laughs> so. Could have something to do to not my cough or my runny nose or anything, but I didn't eat healthy last night at all. Um, I had pizza rolls and cottage cheese. Which I guess isn't too awful bad. I had about 10 pizza rolls and about that much cottage cheese. But then I had cake with some ice cream, a scoop of ice cream on top of it. So that probably wasn't the best idea. But I do love my treats. <laughs> you know, I pay for it a lot of times, so. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, fasting during the day is probably a good idea if you feed your body junk, you know. But, but still, it doesn't account for a runny nose. Well, it could. Everything's connected, so. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my fault. <laughs> no, I'm in one of those moods today. I'm in a in kind of a. I was crabby this morning, but not because of anything that anybody did or didn't do or whatever. It was mostly because I did not sleep good, you know. So I just stayed away from talking just because I knew that in myself. It's like, this isn't going to be a good communicating day. This morning wasn't. You know. The point that some of these biblical scholars are making with other scholars is they find evidence and proofs of things that um, they can show where some of the writers or translators went wrong. And when that happens, people just ignore it. They sweep it under the rug. They're just like, well, that isn't what I was taught in seminary school, so um, I'm not going to listen to it because that's not what I was taught. And they're going along with the norm, what everybody's doing and saying, and they don't care beyond that. They don't care to get to the truth because they actually think they, in their minds and their hearts, they already have the truth, and that's good enough for them. You know, I know a lot of people like that no matter what, you know. I know for a fact if somebody told me, hey, here's an easier way for you to do this that will save you time, money, grief, um, sanity, or whatever, I'd be like, wow, thank you. I'll look into it, you know. What I'm saying is Gnostic Informant might be a good channel for you to look into. Might be. 
if you're interested in getting to some truths that you may not really understand, you know. No matter who you are, or I am, I'm watching them. Not things that I'm learning brand new. I know them already, but it's a refresher. You know, it's like if you have a story inside yourself, and you know the whole story, but, you know, you're not going to sit there and cite the whole book when you're talking to somebody just because you know the whole story, you know what I mean? You might get to the key points, the bullet points, and tell them, you know. But, yeah. Anyway. I'm still trying to remember the point I was trying to make with, with what those guys were saying. Um, maybe I already made it, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Uh, I think it's still in here. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. Dang it. I don't know. No. I just don't, I don't have it. It's not coming to me. <laughs> That's terrible. Doggone it. I'll have one more cigarette here and hang out for a minute and maybe it'll come to me. Maybe not. I surely hate when that happens. It is worse if a person doesn't feel good. Your memory isn't. Yeah, it, it's sort of gets worse when you get older in a way it, it gets worse in some ways in other ways not your memory um wow dang it anyway That might have been my point that I was trying to make as far as um, people just not, they're not willing to look at um, somebody else's proof of what might be wrong. Like, I, I would almost bet my life, make, not, not my soul, but I would... I would bet my life on the fact that there's probably not a rabbi out there. There might be. So if I'm not here tomorrow, maybe I got um, snuffed. Yeah, we can only hope, right? But anyway, I doubt, I highly doubt that there's anybody out there that is going to take the word of a, of a um, Gentile that they have any kind of proof that any of their literature is wrong. You know, that, that really is a major point. And uh, it still floors me to this day that there's a lot of people, Christians, that assume Judaism and Christianity are the same thing because they believe that take like the Sanhedrin, the Torah, the Tanya, the Talmud, and the Holy Bible are all inclusive, like what... Um, Judaism would teach would be w the same as what Christianity is. And that's where they go wrong. They're mistaken. They're taking two entirely different religions and combining the two 
it's just like Christianity has branched off into so many different things. It lost itself. That's what I'm thinking, too. Maybe with uh, Judaism, excuse me a minute, maybe that has something to do with that, too. I don't know. But, like the different um, um, sects of Jews, like um, whether they're Orthodox or what would you call it, unorthodox, and I know there's other branches of Judaism, and it's like um, Abraham, they, they say it's Abrahamic religion. Uh, Abraham wasn't a Jew. Um, and all the children of Abraham are the ones that inherit the Holy Land. That, that, what I just said really kind of says something different than what's being taught out in this world, doesn't it? If Abraham wasn't a Jew, Why are they claiming to be his offsprings and his children that are going to inherit? His, his seeds will be many. I'll be all over the earth. And that is not exclusively um, Israel. Just thought I'd throw that in there. He wasn't a Jew. What does that say for the Abrahamic religions? To start off with, if our forefather of our religion was not Jewish, well, because he was Christian, you know, Something changed, you know. I don't know, just thinking out loud. So I'm going to get this uploaded. I know there's more on my mind, but I just can't really grab it today. It's just, like I say, now it's raining out. It could be barometric pressure does really... Um, it gets to me. I don't know. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. <laughs> no, they don't though. But okay, everybody, have a really good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Thanks for joining me.